verse 8 prevents snake biting. <laughs> that is a village verse 8. So in every uh, demigod verse 8, there are drum beaters. So a party of drum beaters are engaged. And when the fees bill of the drum beaters was to be paid, the demigod Monsa was sold. Uh, they could not pay the bills. And similarly, we may print our uh, books, but the uh, binding charges are so high, then it will cost more than getting it from Japa. Yeah. <laughs> Jayananda looks like Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> yes, you are tall and stout and strong, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> And in Vrindavan, when Kirtanananda was given sannyas, he was looking so nice with this dress and danda. Oh, practically all the devotees of Vrindavan came to offer him respect. Yes. And Janmashtami, they I offered him sannyas. So many devotees came to see in the temple. So there was a big crowd. Ah, he was looking very nice. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also very fair complexion. So with this dress, persons with fair complexion looks very nice. He is very attractive. So the people are not attracted with this dress? In Kirtan. <laughs> yeah. ah, this uh, bare head with tilak and this dress they will know that they are coming from directly from the kingdom of God. <laughs> Actually, it is so. Uh, they have forgotten God, otherwise they would have received these brahmacharis uh, so nicely. In India, he uh, will be received just like gods with this dress. Uh, Hundreds and thousands of people will come to receive you. Yes. So, how Birbhadra is feeling? Huh? He has got pains in the body? He's all right. He's all right. All right. Eating, eating, all right, eating. Hmm? Chanting, all right. All right, thank you. <laughs> I was just searching you, uh, missing you. You are here. <laughs> thank you. I guess. Do like that, as I have done. Yes. Take water. Yes. Little, little. Yes. Yeah, one more, once more, three times. Yeah. Yeah. Take water, take water, take, take water a little. Wash hand. Throw it here. That's all. Like. Now you do like that. Little, little. Keep it there. Nama. Apovitra. Apovitrava. Sarva, Vasthyang, Gato, Opi, Ba, Ja, Smaret, Hundari, Kakyang, Sha, Baiha, Abhantaram, Suchi, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. Now, the purport of this mantra, I have several times uh, 
explain again explaining nama <coughs> nama means a surrender nama om nama this is the way of chanting vedic mantra om means addressing the absolute and nama means i am surrendering every vedic mantra is begun om nama om means address <coughs> so this mantra is chanted with uh, surrender nama nothing can be done without surrender uh, because our this conditional life is rebellious life you have rebelled against the supremacy of the personality of god that is conditional life <coughs> there are so many theses uh, to support this rebellious condition somebody is thinking that i am one with god somebody is thinking god is dead somebody is thinking there is no god somebody is thinking why you are searching god there are so many gods loitering in the street so in this way many theses are there all of them are different symptoms of rebellious condition Uh, the saman substance just like atheists they are boldly saying oh there is no god now <clears throat> but the impersonal is saying there may be god but he has no head he has no tail that's so in this way our condition is rebellious condition the bhagavad gita instructs that you surrender sarva dharman purittajya mam ekam saranam vaja so without surrender there is no question of making any spiritual progress just like a person who has rebelled against the government the first condition is to surrender otherwise there is no question of mercy from the government <clears throat> similarly anyone uh the living entity any one of us who has rebelled against the uh, supremacy of the law the beginning of spiritual life is surrender so this mantra initiation nama nama means surrender and <clears throat> who can surrender surrender one who has understood the lord he can surrender as it is stated in the bhagavad gita bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan mang prapaddat after many many births of cultivation of knowledge when one is perfectly wise at that time he surrenders perfection of acquiring knowledge or wisdom is to surrender <clears throat> so nova nama means i surrender and what is your condition never mind what is that condition apavitra pavitra apavitra means contaminated and pavitra means liberated so we have two conditions either just like either we are healthy or we are diseased there is no third condition crude example similarly the living entities 
they have two conditions. One condition is liberation. Another condition is contamination. Therefore, living entity is called marginal. In between contamination and liberation. Either a living entity can be contaminated or liberated. There is no third condition. <clears throat> but that's when this mantra says, Apavitra pavitra va. Either contaminated or liberated. It doesn't matter. Namo apavitra pavitra. Sarva vasyam. Sarva means all. Vasyam means condition. In any condition. Sarva vasyam gatu piva. In whatever condition you may be. Because two conditions there are. For the living entities, the li a living entity is in the marginal position, either he can be in material nature or in the spiritual nature. The spiritual nature means liberation and uh, material nature means contamination. So in this mantra it is said, that either of the condition, never mind, either you are in material condition or spiritual condition. <clears throat> Sarvavastangato opi ba. Ba means either. Ja, anyone. Smaret. Smaret means remembers. Pundari kakhang. Pundari kakhang means whose eyes are just like lotus petal. That means Krishna or Vishnu. Ja, smaret pundari kakhang. Shab Bhaiha. Bhaiha means externally. Externally, this body. Abhantaram. Abhantaram means internally. Internally, I am spirit. Just like internally, within this dress, I am internally. Externally, I am this dress. Similarly, just Sarit Pundari Kakam. Either he is in the bodily concept of life or he is in the spiritual concept of life. Either he is contaminated or he is liberated. In any condition, one who remembers Krishna or Vishnu, uh, he immediately becomes purified internally and externally. This is the substance of this mantra. And at the last, we are chanting, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. Uh, <clears throat> because it may not be misunderstood that in this verse it is said, the just Manit Pundari Kaka, anyone who remembers. <clears throat> The lotus side. So somebody may think uh, my such and such lover is lotus side, or in that way, lotus side, and it's, there may be so many lotus side. Therefore, at, at last, it is specifically said, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. Lotus side means Vishnu, not any, any, any anybody else. Uh, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. Oh, this is the basic principle of devotional life. Narad Pancharatra, it is recommended. We are explaining these things in devotional, nectar of devotion. The basic principle of purification is uh, Smartabhu Satato Vishnu. Always one has to uh, remember Vishnu or Krishna. Krishna and Vishnu, the same. When you speak Krishna, it includes uh, Vishnu. So, smartabhu uh, satato Vishnu, bismartabhu najatuchi. We shall not forget Vishnu, 
even for a moment. This is the basic principle of devotional life. Somewhere or other, <coughs> we have to remember all is Krishna. <coughs> then, whatever condition we may be, we are pure. Sabhajabhantaram uh, suchi. This chanting helps us always remembering Krishna. As soon as we chant Hare Krishna here, immediately we remember. So, so long I remember, I am suchi, I am pure, no material contamination. Uh, therefore, if I continue my life in that pure stage, then uh, I am eligible for going back to Godhead because nobody can enter in the kingdom of God without being completely pure. Uh, completely pure means anavilasita uh, sunnam no material desire. Here in the material world, we manufacture so many plans to be happy. Material desire. Somebody is thinking, I shall be happy in this way. Somebody is thinking. And there is no question of happiness here. Uh, the, the place is contaminated. Uh, and contaminated just like an uh, infected place. You cannot be happy. The medical officer will ask you to leave that place. This quarter has been infected by the disease. Better you leave, you go somewhere else. That is the treatment. Infected place must be left immediately. So similarly, this world, this material world of three modes of uh, different qualities, <coughs> you have to keep yourself always antiseptic, pure, by remembering Krishna. That is the process. As soon as you forget Krishna, immediately the infection, maya, immediately affects you. Uh, Krishna Bhuliyaji Bhagavan Chakare. What is that Maya? Maya means to plan how to become materially happy. This is Maya. All the people of the world, they're simply making plan how they will be happy within this material. That's this is Maya. The history of the whole world studied. Uh, it is experience that the Roman Empire planned, the British Empire planned, the so many empires they flourish sometimes, all failed. Uh, the Britishers there two hundred years ago, or uh, they are planning to rule over this vast land of America, uh, where George Washington declared independence, their plan failed. Similarly, in India, uh, they were planning to exploit. Now Gandhi's movement made it fail. So this is bigger plan. Similarly, smaller plan also. There are many individually. We make so many plans that I shall be happy in this way, that way, that way. So this plan-making business is Maya. Uh, because that will never be successful. Trace out the history of the whole world. Nobody has become happy. Uh, Hitler made a plan, so great a plan, you see. He was frustrated. So the same man, uh, intelligent man. Uh, therefore, Bhagavad Gita says that a person who is actually intelligent, wise, 
how a man becomes wise after being baffled or frustrated many many times he can understand this is not the process and the vedanta sutra also places the first adhata brahma jignas when one is frustrated in all plan making business for him the vedanta sutra gives him the opportunity now your all plans have failed come here adhata brahma jignasa now try to understand what is brahma this is the first aphorism of vedanta sutra uh, just try to understand brahma so in this way this initiation also initiation means uh the <clears throat> first beginning how to become purified this is initiation uh, because this devotional service means the process of purification uh, now everyone of you individually can understand how you are becoming purified from your past life that is practical yes how you are becoming purified so this initiation means the beginning of purificatory process uh, and the purificatory process <clears throat> what is that this mantra jasmare punnari ka khang sa bahya bandram suchi uh, anyone who always remembers or whenever he remembers <clears throat> if not always as soon as he remembers punnari ka khang so by yabantaram suchi he becomes immediately purified internally and externally mm. uh, so those who are going to be initiated today they should remember that not only they all of us should remember it is not that we have passed all examination no my is very strong any moment as he can catch up <laughs> as soon as that's like a virulent type of disease as soon as there is little negligence uh, there is relapse immediate type right so the doctors take very much precautionary steps in the what is called convalescent stage of cure because there is chance of relapse similarly we are trying to be purified this initiation means to accept the path of purification now we have to continue that path of purification and then if we are strong enough then we can very easily make progress to achieve the ultimate result there is no doubt about it so <clears throat> bhakti marga this devotional service krishna consciousness means to remember all is krishna eh smartabho satato vishnu bismartabho na jatu chit this is the basic principle krishna consciousness we should all is remember krishna and uh, we shall never forget and the very simple method that we chant hare krishna so krishna has given us tongue uh, so we can utilize it and this is the beginning of spiritual life this is the beginning of understanding god or krishna uh, otherwise uh, we cannot understand what is god ata sri krishna namadi na bhavet grahiham indriyai uh, namadi god has name people say why there should be uh, name of god he has no name 
the impersonalists, nameless. Why? The Vedanta Sutra says, Janmadda Sajataha, everything is uh, generated from him. So if there is name, you have got name, I have got name, uh, anything, this uh, tape record has got name, this uh, plate has got name, the place has got name, the carpet has got name, and simply God has no name. Why? Just <laughs> see, see the palace. Eh? The fountainhead of all names is God, and he has no name. Is zero. Ah. These are the arguments, but we don't accept. The thing is, they do not know the name because their senses are not purified. You cannot understand God by imperfect senses. Therefore, Bhagavad says, Atha, Sri Krishna Namadi, Namadi, Nam means name. Adi, because name is the beginning of everything. Just like if I want to make friendship with you, I ask you, what is your name? That is the beginning. Then if you go to the court, before beginning the judgment, what is your name? What is your father's name? Huh. You submit any application, what is your name? So, Namadi. So if we want to understand the supreme, absolute truth, we should begin from the name. Oh, Krishna. Hare Krishna. The name, the holy name. Uh, but we cannot understand whether this is the name of God due to our imperfect senses. Therefore, the formula is Atha Sri Krishna Namadi Na Bhavet Grahyam Indriyai. You cannot understand. Just like we are chanting Hare Krishna, somebody is taking pleasure in hearing the name of Krishna. Somebody may say, hey, what is this nonsense they are disturbing me? Uh, because they have, he has no knowledge of the name. But this name, not only name, Nam Adi, beginning from name, first of all name, then quality, then form, uh, uh, then pastimes, mm -hmm. then Entourage in this way, God has everything. When we say king, king means his kingdom, his uh, palace, his secretary, his queen, his so many, his government, his gone expanding, so many things. Simply by one word, king. King does not mean simply one person. Similarly, when we act, say God or Krishna, Immediately, it is to be understood that he has so many things behind. So many, the whole world is behind. So, how to understand? Atha Sri Krishna Namadi, his name, his quality, his form, his entourage, his expansion. Nabhavet Grahyam Indriya. This Indriya, this senses, materially contaminated, uh, cannot understand, cannot grasp what is the name of Krishna, what is the form of Krishna, what is the quality of Krishna. Then, the uh, why you are uh, taking so much trouble? If by these senses we cannot understand Krishna, then what is the use of wasting time? No. The next line is, is Sevan Mokhi Juhado You cannot understand by uh, exercising 
your senses. But he reveals to whom who is in the service attitude or jivadu, beginning from the tongue. Uh, Seven Mukhi Jivadu. Uh, this how, how, of all the senses, the tongue is considered to be the principal sense. Uh, so tongue, if the tongue is trained or the tongue is spiritualized, then naturally all the senses become spiritualized. Uh, the Jivadu. So our training is the tongue training, uh, uh, training chanting Hare Krishna, and uh, <laughs> let it test Krishna Prasad. Then what will be the all other senses? There are five senses for acquiring knowledge. Five senses uh, uh, acting. Uh, everything will be controlled and uh, devotional service of Krishna consciousness means sarvapadi binin muktam tatparatena nirmalam by contacting relationship with Krishna these senses become purified and uh, what is the uh, symptom of purification, sarvapadhi binin muktam. Uh, uh, they become uh, uncontaminated by the designative material identification. Uh, uh, there are so many things. Uh, so the process of Krishna consciousness is purification of the senses, and the purification of senses begins uh, by training the tongue uh, with sadhvi spirit. So, those who are going to be initiated, this is special, everyone should note it, that we should train our tongue uh, not to talk nonsense things, you see. Simply talk of Krishna. We have got so many subject matter. We have got Bhagavad Gita, we have got Srimad Bhagavatam, we have got uh, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, so many books. Uh, and it's a thousand Upanishad, Ved, Vedanta. Anyone you select, they talk. Uh, just like Amuri, Sabai Mana Krishna Padara Vindayo Bachangsi Bhikuntu Gunanu Bandhan. Maharaj Amuri is, he set a very nice example that. He fixed up his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. And when he was speaking, he was talking about Krishna. So just try to utilize your tongue. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it is contaminated or purified, but the process is purificatory. You just train your tongue nicely engage in Krishna. So, if you can talk, you go, preach, talk of Krishna, talk of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, lecture, anywhere, uh, and that you will be doing the best service to the people and to yourself. If you think that you are unable to give speeches, uh, then you chant Hare Krishna. And eat prasadam. So there is no difficult. Train the tongue. Seven mukhihi jivhado. Beginning from the tongue, you shall be able to purify all your senses. And as soon as your senses are purified, you will see Krishna. You will understand what is Krishna, what is his name, what is his form, what is his kingdom. Everything will be. Sāyāvī uh, vāsprattada. You will have, haven't got to endeavor. As soon as your senses are purified, a Krishna is present. Just like as soon as the night is over, the sun is present. 
You cannot search out sun in the darkness. You simply wait for the morning and the sun is at your door. Similarly, try to drive away the darkness and Krishna will see. He'll see, oh, Krishna is not dead. He's so nice. So this initiation means uh, beginning a purificatory process of the senses. And that beginning with the tongue. Very simple method. Uh, we are not asking you to <laughs> show some gymnastic feats or no. Simply try to control your tongue. It is in your hand. And what is the means of controlling? Just engage, chanting, Hare Krishna. And take Krishna prasadam. Samadasi will supply you nice prasadam. Yes. It is very easy. Uh, don't take anything which is not Krishna prasadam and don't talk anything which is not Krishna. Then you become liberated. Your path of liberation is open. Two things. Don't talk anything except Krishna. Don't eat anything except Krishna Krishna. Is it very difficult? Mm. All right. Now, give me your beads. Yes. Beginning from here. Somebody died. Yes. Small bit. Chant you. Bow down. Bow down here. Yeah. Hmm. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Shamin Iti Namine. Hmm. So, we hmm. begin from one side like this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. Come to this side. He will ask your God brothers, they will let you know how they are doing. And your uh, spiritual name is Aravinda. Aravinda. A R A V I N D A. Uh, Aravinda. Aravinda Akha. Uh, Krishna, another name is Aravinda. Aravinda uh, means lotus flower. Yes. Krishna's eyes are just like lotus petal, and his feet is lotus feet, his uh, abdomen, from abdomen, lotus grows. So, uh, therefore, in one word, he is mm, lotus and full lotus. Is is in painful condition? Yes, yes. Yes, huh? yes. yes. No. Just uh, catch him. Oh, Aravinda Akha is Krishna's name. So, Aravinda Das, your name, Aravinda Das Brahmachari. Now, we have forgotten to chant the preliminary mantras. Bandi, Ahang, Sri, Guru, Sri, Jita, Padakamalam, Sri, Guru, Vaishna, 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 Sri, Sri Rupam, Sagra, Jatam, Sagana, Raghunathan, Nitang, Tvang, Sajivam, Shah, Adhitang, Shah, Abhudhutang, Parijana, 
सहिता कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सगन ललिता श्री विशाखा नितांश नमो ओं विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदात क्षाई नामिने नमो ओं विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती नामिने श्री बार्ष महानवी देवी दई ताय कृपा धय कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान दायिनी प्रभवे नमः माधुर्य उज्जल प्रेमाढ़ श्री रूपानुग भक्तिद श्री गौर करुणा शक्ति विग्रह आय नम स्ते नमस्ते गौर वाणी श्री मूर्त दीन तारिणी रूप अनुग विरुद्याप सिद्धांत धांत हारिणी नमो ओं गौर किशराय साक्षात वैराग्य मूर्त विप्र लंभ रसा बोधे पादा भोजाय ते नम नम भक्ति विनदाय सच्चिदा नंद नामिने गौर शक्ति सरू पाय रूपा मूग बरा यते गौर आवि भाव भूमेश स्तं निर्दिष्टिया सज्जन प्रिय वैष्णव सार्व भौम श्री जगत नाथाय ते नम वंशा कल्प तुरु भश्च कृपा सिंधु भय वच पति पाव नेभ्य वैष्णव बेभ्य नमो नम नमो महा मदानाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदा व्यति कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौर तिषे नम पंच तत्मक कृष्ण भक्त रूप स्वरूपक भक्त अवतार भक्तख्य नमा भक्त शक्ति हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगत पति गोपीश गोपिका कांत्य राधा कांत्य नमस्ते जयतांग 
जयतांग सुरतो पंगो ममा मंदा मतेर गति मत सर्वश्या पदाम भोजो राधा मदना मोहनो दिव्या ब्रिंद्या रन्या कल्पा द्रमाधा श्रीमा रत्ना गारा शिंगा सनस्थो श्री श्री राधा सीला गोविंदो प्रष्ठा लीभी सेव्या मानो स्मरामे श्रीमान रासा रसा रंभी बंशी बटा तटास स्थिता कर्षण वेनो सनै गोपी गोपी नाथा श्रेयस सु नहा तप्ता कांचन गौरांगी राधे बिंदा बने सरी वृखा वानु सुते देवी प्रणा मामी हरि प्रिय हरि कृष्णा हरि कृष्णा 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 हरि 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 राम हरि राम 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 हरि हरि विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता शामीन नामिने नाउ योर फिनिश टेक इट योर नेम इज गजेंद्र महा गजेंद्र यस जे जे एन डी आर ए गजेंद्र गज मीन्स एलिफेंट एंड इंद्र मीन्स किंग किंग ऑफ द एलिफेंट्स so there was a, a great devotee of lord krishna who, who was king of the elephants so he shall bring some elephants for us <laughs> for fetching work come on uh, you have got printed uh, ten kinds of offenses this will be they have heard the offenses so is here no now him Yes, Should I recall? Yes. The ten offenses to avoid in chanting the Maha Mantra. First is blaspheming the Lord's devotee. Just read. Yes. Second, considering the Lord and other demigods on the same level. Uh, this is very important point. Blaspheming the devotees. Ah, oh, there, Lord's devotee. Um, in many countries, many places, just like Lord Jesus Christ, He is also devotee of Lord Muhammad. He is also devotee of Lord. So hmm, it is not that because we are uh, Krishna conscious, we shall unnecessarily uh, decry any other parts, any any other devotee. It may be according to time, place, and country, the method may be defined. But anyone who is preaching devotion to God, he is a devotee of God. So he should never be blaspheming. Yes. Two, considering the Lord and other demigods on the same level. Yes. One should not 
uh, put the supreme personality of God in. Just like the Mahavadi says, the demigods and God, they are all the same. Because according to them, God has no form. So any form you accept, imagine, as the form of God, it is as good. But uh, that is not the fact. There are demigods and the supreme God also. So we should not place, just like demigod, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Indra, Chandra, they are demigods. So we should not place. In one sense, there is nothing except God, because everything expands of God. But that does not mean I am equal to God. I am also expansion of God. That's that's a fact. Uh, just like father and the son. Son is the expansion of father. And still, the son is not the father. Uh, don't mistake that. Uh, there is no difference between father and son because the same body is expanded as son. But still, the son is not the father. Father is father, son is son. Uh, this... Uh, uh, I am to say, um, variety, the Mahavadi philosophers, they do not understand. Uh, then? Uh-huh. So we're assuming that there are many gods. Hmm. Uh, God is one. There cannot be many gods. If God is not one, there is no meaning of God. God means, uh, according to Vedic definition, asamardha. Asama means one who has no equal. Nobody is equal to God. And urdha means nobody is greater than God. God is great. Nobody can be greater than God. Therefore, uh, God is one. Nobody is greater, nobody is equal. That means everyone is lower. Uh, Then... Neglecting the orders of the spiritual master. Yes. This is one offense. These are offenses. Uh, uh, when we accept spiritual master, it is understood that you cannot deny his order. Just like Krishna and Arjun was talking as friends, but when Arjun accepted Krishna as spiritual master, uh, he was simply hearing, and wherever there was a difficulty to understand, he was questioning, not that he was equally arguing with Krishna. Before accepting him, he was arguing. Uh, so, this is the position. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he said that my spiritual master found me a great fool. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not a fool, but it is the good qualification of a disciple to remain a fool before the spiritual master. Therefore, he will never, I mean to say, dare to uh, argue or disobey. And that is offense. No? That does not mean that when you cannot understand you cannot question. Question must be there. That is stated in this Bhagavad Gita. Tadviddhi pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya. Uh, you, your relationship is to know from spiritual master everything. But you should know that with three things. What is that? First of all, you should surrender. You must accept the spiritual master as uh, greater than you. Otherwise, what is the use of accepting one spiritual mark? Um, pranipat. Pranipat means surrendering. And pariprasna. And questioning. And seva and service. There must be two sides. Service and surrender. And in the middle there must be question. Otherwise, uh, there is no question or answer. Two things must be there. Service and surrender. Then answer a question is nice. Yes. The fourth offense is minimizing the authority of the Vedas. Yes. Uh, scriptures, the authority of Vedas, they must be accepted. Just like the other day, 
I was explaining. The Veda says the corn cell is pure, although it is a bone of an animal. In other places, Veda gives you the injunction, the bone of an animal is impure. But it says the corn cell is pure. It can be placed before the deity. It can be used in the deity room in its service. Now, there may be argument, oh, this is a bone of an animal. How is that? Contradiction. No. So, one should accept the injunction of the Vedas like that. Whenever you say this is impure, it is impure. When you say it is pure, it is pure. Oh. Now, if there is any doubt, that should be understood by questioning submissively and with service from the spiritual master. The spiritual master is there. Uh, then, But we should always accept the injunction of the scripture as truth. Just like there is a proper Bible truth. Biblical truth. Nobody can deny Bible. This should be the uh, attitude. Uh, Bible is also part of Vedas. Therefore, Vedic injunction should be accepted as it is, without any interpretation. Just like Bhagavad Gita is Veda. Why Veda? The Supreme Personality of God is personally speaking. Therefore, it is Veda. There is no mistake. One should accept. No interpretation. As it is. Therefore, we are presenting Bhagavad Gita as it is. Yes. And the fifth offense was interpreting the holy names of God. Yeah. No interpretation in the holy. Just like Krishna, the Mahavadi philosophers may, just like Gandhi has written, uh, Pandava means the senses, Guru Khetra means this body, Krishna means the mind. No such nonsense interpretation. Krishna is Krishna. Uh, yes, go on. The sixth offense is committing sin on the strength of chanting. Yes. Now, we have explained the mantra that as soon as one chants Hare Krishna, immediately Bajjham uh, Bhantaram uh, Suchi, he becomes purified. Yeah. Now, if one takes advantage of this holy name, oh, let me commit sins, uh, oh, just like uh, sometimes the and the Christian church they take advantage that by confessing sin one becomes free from sinful reaction. So go to church and confess and again come out and do all sorts of sins and again confess. This sort of <laughs> minimizing is a nonsense. It is fact. When you confess before the church, before God, you are free from all sinful acts. And that's all right. But if you commit again, uh, then next confession will not be accepted. They do not know this. Uh, you cannot judge. Suppose a child has committed some mistake. Fathers are like, don't do this. If he again does it, uh, there is no... Excuse. Uh, they do not know that. Uh, they think we shall commit sin and go to church and confess and finish. So let us do this balancing business. Yes. Similarly, don't do this balancing business because chanting Hare Krishna will wash up all my accounts of sinful activities. So in, in the morning, from morning to Night, let me do all kinds of sinful activities, and at night, at bedtime, let me chant Hare Krishna. Then finish. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That is the greatest offense. Yes, uh, you'll never be forgiven. Those who purposely uh, do like that, though we have, I've got very nice instrument for washing off my sinful activity. So whole day let me do all sinful activities and at night let me chant Hare Krishna. Uh, let me meditate. That's all. Finish. No. 
You should know that the name, the holy name has got the power. Now, from this date, you are free from all sinful activities, the action. But don't do it. Uh, that is the greatest offense. Yes. Sabbath says, is instructing the names, in instructing the Lord's name to the unfaithful. <clears throat> ah, yes, yes. Those who do not believe in God, atheist, what is the use of? Uh, uh, but uh, not to bother him, but give him the chance of hearing. That will make him competent to come forward. Therefore, we are distributing this holy name. Not that everyone will be immediately turned to Krishna consciousness, but we are giving chance. If they hear, you have got practical experience, somebody is hearing his reforming. So we should give chance. But if one is staunch atheist, we should not talk very much with him about Krishna. Uh, he may say something against offensive. Yeah. Then, the eighth offense is comparing the holy name to material piety. Yes. And another thing, just like we are holding this ceremony, uh, initiation ceremony, you should not be accepted as we are uh, functioning some uh, ritualistic ceremony. No. It is different from ritualistic ceremony. Although it appears like ritualistic, it is transcendent. Ritualistic ceremony, they are meant for uh, giving you advantage of become uh, pious, from impious life. It also gives that, that but this, this is not the ultimate aim. The ultimate aim is to give you love of God, which is far, far transcendental to the pious and impious activity. There is a different thing that belongs to the spiritual world. Love of God. It is not that it is a function to nullify your sinful activities. That is automatically done. Just like if you get one million dollars, the purpose of ten dollars automatically is served. Similarly, this acceptance of holy name of God will automatically uh, wash off all your sinful reaction. That's a fact. But it is not meant for that purpose. It is meant for her purpose, to attain to this platform of loving God, rendering transcendental loving service to the Lord. That is the aim. Yes. The ninth offense is inattentive while chanting the whole Yes. There is a ninth offense. So I will chant here also. And you don't turn your attention to anything else. Mechanically chanting and thinking of something. Uh, I'm thinking of Krishna is all light, but if I think something uh, which is uh, not in Krishna consciousness, uh, but the best, best thing is that I shall chant Hare Krishna and each word I shall hear. Then it will be very much effective. Yes. The tenth offense is attachment to material things hmm. while engaged in the practice of chanting. Oh, yeah. Attachment, oh, this is the disease, oh, mameti. Uh, the material disease means I am thinking this body I am and everything belonging to this body or in relationship to the body mine. This is material disease. So we shall see by chanting, we shall see how much you are making progress, how much I am free from these two concepts of life, that I am this body and anything belonging to this body is mine. This is the test. How we are becoming free from these two concepts of life. Uh, if there is still uh, the, uh, the concept that I am this body and every anything belonging to this body is mine, uh, then you have to chant very cautiously to make progress. Yes. That's all. These ten kinds of offenses you should be guarding us. No. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Shamin Hiti Namini. Come on.
ને અનુરાધા એ એની આર એ ડી એ છે અનુરાધા અનુ અનુ મીન્સ વન હુ ફોલોઝ એન્ડ રાધા રાધા રાણી સો વન હુ ફોલોઝ રાધા રાણી વેર એવર રાધાની ગોઝ સી ફોલોઝ થ્રી ટાઈમ્સ આઈ સલ છે થ્રી ટાઈમ્સ યુ લો વેન છું ચંદા <laughs> <laughs> 